Hey, Jagger, what a difference a month makes over there on MSNBC's Morning Joe uh, on the heels of the uh, Democrats' loss to Donald Trump. As we all know, Joe and Mika, well, they seemingly covered their losing bet by weekending down to Mar-a-Lago under the guise of journalistic responsibility and the pursuit of the truth, uh, something like that. And that choice, I guess, was just their choice, not a specific assignment, right? Well, that seems to have blown up all over the hallways of an already beleaguered MSNBC, and civil war has erupted as a result. So, as pro wrestling has informed the degeneration of our current political discourse, I guess our big story today involves the potential face turn by the Rhea Ripley of MSNBC, the not-to-be-messed-with Rachel Maddow. Now, Rachel and her colleagues, they are rightfully PO'd, uh, it would well seem, uh, at this morning's tag team and their mealy-mouthed account of their uh, actions, well, that have ultimately become front-page distracting news at the expense of other more important news. Now, before we get into that uh, report that we have for you, well, here's how Joe and Mika spent MSNBC's valuable broadcast time defending their political lifestyle choice just this morning. This is what's been going on now for several weeks. You know, we went down to talk to the president-elect. And people wrote articles that were just false, but you know what we did? We did the corporate thing. Corporate said, don't say anything. Just keep your head down. What did, what did the royals say? Never explain, never complain, whatever. We did that. But guess what? The main complaint was that we called Donald Trump's rhetoric fascist during the campaign. And then we went down to have an off-the-record comment with him. Guess who else does that? Um, let me see. From the New York Times. The New York the Washington Times. Post, Washington Post. Washington. You know what? I even think folks from the Atlantic. I think I, I think they might probably, be doing that. If they have a chance to so talk on it, the background with the incoming president and president-elect, yeah. they would do it. In fact, as somebody wrote during this outrageously stupid, immature... Uh, a series of articles that lied time and time again about us. Reporters said, well, I'd be fired if I had the opportunity to go in and talk to somebody who's the incoming president of the United States. They didn't do it. Ask any journalist at the New York Times, the New York Post. And that's the funny thing. People at the Washington Post especially, hair on fire, media report, how dare they, how dare they. At the yeah, same yeah. time that the Washington Post is doing the same thing. Right. The only difference between what we did on that visit and what the New York Times, Washington Post, Wall Street Journal, everybody else is doing is, we were transparent, we actually told you. And so I understand if, if you don't know how the media works day in and day out, and you're just like watching this show day in and day out, I understand that you'd be like, wow, okay, man, man, that's sudden. But for media reporters to lie to pretend that this is a shock to try to get clips for Washington Post reporters and columnists say, how dare they go see him after they said he was a fascist? And that's exactly what the Washington Post is doing. That's exactly what the Wall Street Journal is doing. Their that's job. exactly what the New York Times. Yeah, you know what you call it? You call it their job. And let me say this. Let me say this. Two things. You can do two things at the same time. You can say he had fascist rhetoric and still go in and talk to him. Yeah. You know why I do that? To get the read of the man. You know why I went in and talked to Macron? To get the read of the man at a crucial time in EU funding. You know why I do that? To get the read of the leader. To get the read of where the country's going. So I can come back here and talk to you and let you know what the hell is going on. With context and, and insight. And give you context, insight, and background. You know everybody we have on this show that's a reporter? It's what they do every day. They speak on background. Mm, methinks thou doth protest too much, and methinks I'm not alone, uh, because uh, the Daily Mail UK today is reporting. MSNBC descends into civil war as Rachel Maddow turns on Morning Joe hosts from bending knee to Trump. MSNBC anchor Rachel Maddow is reportedly furious with her Morning Joe colleagues for meeting 
with Donald Trump after he won the presidential election. Joe Scarbo and Mika Brzezinski visited the president-elect a little over two weeks ago at his Mar-a-Lago resort in Palm Beach, Florida, to restart communications and set a new approach ahead of his second term. Maddow, along with other hosts at the Trouble Liberal Network, uh, are calling this move by the Married Morning Joe co-hosts opportunistic, according to a report in the U.S. Sun. The meeting at Mar-a-Lago created a lot of tension in the teams and many other stars. See both Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski as opportunistic with very low self-respect and forgetting their values of being journalists with independence and integrity. Said a journalist who worked at MSNBC for 15 years, speaking on the condition of anonymity, the journalist made it clear who has a problem with Morning Joe pivoting from calling Trump a fascist and an admirer of Adolf Hitler to having a cordial meeting with him to figure out coverage going forward. They have lost credibility. Rachel Maddow is pissed at them, as are other presenters like Chris Hayes and Ari Melber. They are so frustrated, the journalist said. MSNBC disputed this report, claiming that Maddow hasn't said anything on air or off air about Scarborough and Brzezinski's meeting with Trump. Any insinuation otherwise is merely speculative. An MSNBC spokesperson told the U.S. Sun this comes as MSNBC has devolved into utter turmoil following Trump's win. The network's viewership has taken a precipitous dive. Comcast is considering spinning off the cable channel, and Maddow agreed to a $5 million pay cut in her new contract. According to Brzezinski, the rationale for reaching out to Trump was to soothe the fears of the viewers who are worried about his cabinet picks. Still, Morning Joe suffered a huge dip in ratings after the Trump meeting. There are also rumblings the pair got together with Trump for far more nefarious reasons. An anonymous source told Puck News that they were afraid the incoming president would have allowed Gates as Secretary General to investigate conspiracy theories surrounding the 2001 death of Scarborough's intern while he was a GOP congressman in Florida. Despite striking a warm media relationship when Trump ran for president the first time in 2016, Brzezinski and Scarborough had a falling out with him after he shocked the world and beat failed presidential candidate Hillary Clinton. Scarborough and Brzezinski were highly critical of Trump's presidency after he entered the White House repeatedly condemning him on their morning news program. Brzezinski, in particular, repeatedly needled Trump for being mentally ill and speculated about his need to see a psychiatrist. In June 2017, Trump fired back at the pair on social media, recalling how low-IQ Crazy Mika, along with Psycho Joe, came to Mar-a-Lago for three nights in a row during New Year's Eve and were desperate to spend time with him. Well, you know, Joe seems like a man's man, but he did say something interesting earlier uh, today. You know why I do that? To get the read of the man. Read of the man, indeed. I take heed, Joe, because uh, here's a read of the man worth revisiting. You know, Michael Wolff's Washington tell-all book, Fire and Fury, inside the Trump White House, contained a passage that describes how Trump would devise calculated plots to get the wives of his friends into bed using jealousy and revenge as bait. President Trump used to brag that sleeping with your friends' wives, well, that makes life worth living according to the book. Uh, Joe, no one would be more delighted to see Morning Joe turn into Goodnight Mika than the guy whose ring you recently kissed. And he'd sell that tape to Fox faster than Brooks Brothers ships half zips. So watch out and stay tuned.